you, Trudy. Said, um, to be, uh, uh, I guess, to have made Jesus Lord and Savior of my life. To yes. have believed in His uh, birth, death, and resurrection. Yes. For the forgiveness of my sins. Okay. In reference to the first point of being Lord and Savior, the term there is a Greek term called kurios. Yep. Right? Kurios literally means one of a high disposition. We see this in the book of Genesis where Abraham is referred by his wife as um, my Lord. Now, when this title is made, the term, as I made mention, is equivocated as Christ being an elevated being who rises up to the level of God upon God bringing him up to himself. However, he's still distinguished between God and himself. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6, it says, For unto us there is one God the Father, for whom all things are made, and one Lord Jesus Christ. So even Paul distinguishes as to who, the, who God is, who is the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. So when you say Lord and Saviour, Lord, yes, as one who is of a high disposition. As, and this is mentioned in Mark's Gospel as well, where the master of the house is referred to as a Lord as well. Now, Saviour. This Saviour is a title which is ubiquitous, widespread, to other people in the Bible as well. In, in um, Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 27, and in um, Judges chapter 2, verse 9, saviors are those who come to their communities and redeem those who have transgressed. So in that context, if you're, if you're going to say in the, in the understanding that he, he's your Lord and Savior in the terms of one who is an elevated person, or you're going to say he's a savior, then I wouldn't have any problem with that. However, if you say it, Trudy, with the understanding that he's now your God and Savior, that's an issue. Because as I said, and I, thought, I think I've explained that very well, there's a distinguishing term between the term Lord, which is one of a highly exalted person, who you give a title of that honor to that individual, like I said, Lord, word kurios. And the term Savior literally means one who saves their communities. And as I said, there are other saviors, and I made reference to you within the pretext of these verses in Nehemiah 9, 27, and Judges chapter 2, verse 9, that these are referred to as um, uh, saviors. They're also referred to as saviors. So if you say in that context, Trudy, no problem whatsoever. Okay? Because Christ would have been a Lord to them in the sense of one who ex exalted to that title. But it says God made Christ Lord. See, so it was actually God giving him that title by bringing him up to that particular level. And the saviour, as I made mention. So if it's in that context, no problem at all. So what would your concept of salvation be and like how one would get to heaven? So, the concept of salvation is in essence um, acknowledging, as Christ says in John 17, 3. For th this is very telling. Think about it carefully, Trudy. Christ says in John 17, 3, For this is eternal life, that they may know you as the only true God, and whom you have sent the messenger Jesus Christ, the apostelos, John chapter 17, verse 3. The definition, Trudy, is given to you there as to what, how one attains that eternal life based upon the question you have just posed. Whom you have sent. Now if you go to the biblehub.net of this, of the Greek interlinear, it says, um, and, and the messenger Jesus Christ, because one who is sent is referred to as the Greek word apostelis. What about the verses? Like the countless amount of verses that talk about the way to eternal life being through belief in Jesus. Yes, so again, so if we can just check, like for example, John chapter 14, verse 6. For I'm the way the truth through, yeah, life. so you know, this is a, it's a source of quite bewilderment to me, particularly, that our Christian friends seem to have understood this to mean something beyond what is stated within the text. Normally speaking, if you read from chapter 14, verse 1, where he speaks to, um, that Christ makes mention, that in my, in my Father's house there are many mansions. So then further on, to continue to verse 6, he's addressing Thomas and those people who are somewhat reticent to accept his point. So he, in that sense, that says that I am the way, meaning follow my way, because the way of the Jews who ha had nominally transgressed their people, that was not the way to follow. Then he was given an example, follow my life, the life, the example that I, I'm leading to you, and I speak the truth. So all he's saying in effect is that I am the way to follow, the life, I am the way, follow my way, follow my life example, for us to be the truth. Yes, precisely. So because he has been sent to those people at that particular time with that particular message. How, how, do we, how would you defend your argument that it was only a 
that particular Because he's addressing those individuals. Yes. Because when he says in the nominative in the nominative, in the first party, in the first party sense, that he's speaking to a group of individuals, you see. So he's saying to them, no one comes through the Father except through me. Meaning to say, because I'm God's conduit, hence it becomes a precursor for you to follow my um, way in order to achieve getting close to God. Because it says further on in the Bible that he doesn't... Sorry. In terms of getting closer to God, but yeah. Jesus says, like himself, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever so believes in him shall not perish but have his heart yeah, that's John 16. Yeah. That's John 3:16. Yeah, so but over there, the word is the Greek word is there called monogenes, which uh, for, for for that God so ever loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That who, so that means a unique, and we accept that He was unique. Begotten doesn't mean unique. It means like beget. No, it doesn't. No, that's like the Jesus is God's begotten Son. Like it doesn't come from, from yeah. See, this is where the mistake has occurred. Would you respect? Like, do you mind ask, like, what you guys are out here trying to do today? Because it seems like it's not really trying to have a conversation, but just to, yeah. um, like, just, just to say your knowledge. But like, what is the aim? So the aim essentially is for Christians to understand number one who the historical Jesus was. Yeah. I've given you an example in John 17, three. So yes, that's as far as you. So this is what we're trying to for people to perhaps reconsider on the basis of. How, so, why? Because it, in in the concept of the biblical narrative itself. It's, um, you know, um, it's unacceptable to relay man as God, which is relayed in Numbers 19.23 and also in Hosea 11.9, that yeah, God, God is Jesus not a man. Is a man, that's why, like, of course, like, we wouldn't call any old man God, but because Jesus himself is God. And, like, the yeah. disciples themselves, like, worshipped him. You see, and in the Old Testament, it was commanded that, you know, there should be no other gods. Like, they weren't, it would have been wrong for them to worship anyone other than Yahweh. But like, for example, what does worship entail? In 1 Corinthians, sorry, 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 20 to 23, it states that um, the congregation worshipped David. So, yeah, so worship, you know, in those days, if, if you um, invited a guest over, the way to greet the person would be to kneel in prostration to the individual. So what would you say? I'm just, I'm trying to answer you, so you get a rounded idea because you asked the plus the term is there's proskuneo in Greek. Are you Greek yourself? Or? No, no, okay. So that's what I just want you to be observed. What we're trying, we're trying to bring Christians back to the historical understanding of Christ, who Christ was, meaning one who gave soul glory to God alone. To the extent that when he's referred to as a, a good teacher, he pounces on the individual for giving him that title and equivocates that nominally to God alone. Hence, we must understand that he gave all attribution and glory to God alone. He never said, I am God or worship me in the context that you, uh, that you have been appropriated through history. So that is a classic example, Mark 10, 17. I'm sure you're aware of the story. The rich young man runs up to Jesus, says to him, good teacher, what must I do to get eternal life? Christ says to him, why do you call me good? There is no one good except for God alone. What verse? Mark chapter 10, verse 17, 18. So the story is as such as try to recollect it. A rich young man, he runs up to Jesus. He calls him good teacher, which is a title of honor, which is owed to Christ. What, must, what good deed must I do to get eternal life? Christ says to him, why do you call me good? There is no one good except for God alone. So he's deferring the title of goodness solely to God and disequivocating himself from that title and making sure that the young man understood. So when he subsequently advises him- About the verses that allude to Jesus being present in creation. Like as, which one do you have in mind? Um, one Colossians so, 15 perhaps? You mean Colossians? Yeah, one Colossians. Yeah, one Colossians. No, I'm, I'm giving you the reference to what you may bring forward Colossians, as- I mean, there's only one book of Colossians. So do you mean Colossians chapter one? Yeah, Colossians chapter one, verse 15. Yeah, and also um, in John one as well. Which specific verse did you have in mind? Was it 1 1? In the beginning was the word, the word was with God. And so, yeah. So, in the beginning was the word. And the word Jesus, was with God. Yeah. The word was with God, and the word was God. Now, tr Trudy, check this out. Listen carefully. Yeah. In the beginning was the word. Yeah. So, you just confirmed the word would be Jesus. Yeah. And the word was with God, and who the was word, the Father. And the word was God. Okay, just, I'm, I'm going to address these points singularly. There's, some, there's a terrible I issue which is going to develop and that's referred to as the fallacy of equivocation. What you're actually doing, you're making God, Jesus as the Father, which is heresy according to your belief. And I'll show it to you. I'm not calling Jesus the Father, I'm saying he's 
got, no, but, I'm saying that he's subordinate to his father. I, I believe he's a subordinate to his father, but I believe that he's equal to God in essence. He okay. is God. Okay, so now, just in reference to that verse, which is what I was saying to seek you to highlight, to show to you. In the beginning was the word, in your the Logos. So that means your belief is that Logos is Jesus. And the Logos, who is Jesus, was with God, who is the Father. Yes? And the, and, and, and the Word was God. So what you're saying is Jesus, who is the Logos, is God, who is the Father. So what you're basically saying, Jesus is the Father. So are you saying that John now that's what, 1, 1 is incorrect? The, what I'm saying to you, if you apply the logic of what I've said, as I've said to you, it's yeah. called the fallacy of equivocation. You've made the Word. Not, not necessarily. Like, I believe God is three distinct persons, one being the Father, one being the Son, Jesus, yes. and one being the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying Jesus isn't the Father. He's Precisely. God, but, he's not but that is what that's, that one one John concludes. So you're the, all saying that the Bible is incorrect. So what I'm, I'm just asking you, it's yes, Trude, I'm asking you to use your... Using your, everything you said up till now, you're using the Bible as a defense for. So, so, okay, so let me explain to you once more. Just follow it slowly. In the beginning was the Word. Yeah. Who is the Word? Jesus. Yeah. And the Word was, was God. with God. No, not was, was God, with was God. with God. So who is God here? The Father. Yeah. And the Word, yeah. who is Jesus, is God. Yeah, meaning not, the Father. No, it because say no, God. no it but that say but that is what Okay, but isn't God the Father there? In that because yeah. if, if Jesus I'm is the Word God. and God I'm, is the Father, so, so the I Word is, is the Father. No, we don't believe in the Trinity, no. But what I'm saying to you, this, the Trinity in this equation um, has no bearing because well, all it should... I would really disagree with that. No, but with respect to you, because the only verse you could have brought up is 1 John 5, 7. There are three that bear witness in the heaven, the Son, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. That's not to be found in today's Bibles. Which, which version is this? The ESV. ESV, yeah, check it out. 1 John 5, 7 is to be taken out. I think I do recall 1 John 5, 7. There should well, be a footnote. Here. There should be a footnote. In all the other Bibles, there's a footnote usually at the bottom which says. There are three that testify. Yeah. The spirit and the water and the blood. Yeah. These three agree. Okay, that's good. So what they've done, the ESV, what's at, what's at the bottom of the page? Oh, it's not. The footnote is not to do with that. Verse. Okay. So what it basically is, that is what they've left in there. But previously, it was there are three that bear witness in the heavens the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, so and these, I'm just trying to answer your question so you've got an idea no, of but where. That's not actually my question because yeah. my question was how you view John 1 1. So the first John scripture that you said, like, I am not entirely sure actually, like, about my knowledge on that. I don't have knowledge on that. So, so which, which one did you. Uh, well, I'm talking about the John 1 1. Okay. Because, like, that is still in today's Bible, so yes. how would you explain that being there? Okay. F okay, first of all, I've tried to explain to you that f uh, the fallacy of equivocation, because what you're doing essentially is you're making the Word the Father. That's how it works. No, in, like, but can I just finish? Let me just, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I'm just saying that okay. but Jesus so what? is God, but Jesus is not the Father. I'm not but, trying but to make I know, Jesus I know that's not what you're trying to say, no, but no, that's no, what no, the passage is telling you. No, it's not. The passage because, is telling me that. The uh, passage is telling me what I'm to tell you as well. Jesus is God, but it's not Father. Okay, so I mean, I've made my point. Anyway, secondly, of more significance, it doesn't mention the Word as being Jesus in that sense, because it's, if you look at it, it says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word is not mentioned as Jesus, but rather it's in the new agenda of the 300 usages of the term Word in the uh, Old Testament. It's referred to in the new agenda of it. It's not referred to in the male masculine pronoun, which would... I don't. Yeah, I just know yeah but I'm just giving you that information. So actually, it's not. It's it, this is not referring to Jesus in that sense. So it's all it's referring to is it's in a new agenda as an it. And I think in the. So um, what is it then? It, it is a God. Yeah, and the word was. And so in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was. So the it would be the new agenda of it's just being the word of God, then manifesting itself as a personified personification of Christ. When it said then, and and the, and, and the world tabern and the word then tabernacled, meaning lived in a particular way, and then and then dwelt among us. Yes, in the sense that it was the personification of God's word, which then expressly comes in the form of Christ, as an expression, just like in you know, like in Proverbs chapter eight verse twenty two as well, where the Word of God is expressing itself in that personified manner. So similarly, in this particular way... How about then in John 1, so when it says, 
he was in the beginning with God, all things were made through him, and without him was not anything that was made. In him was life. Yeah. So again, life. So again, with respect to that tran translation, the, as I made mention, from the perspective it's made in reference to it, so the word is referred to in the new tragenda, and that's made mention in one of the old uh, versions of the Greek manuscripts that it's in reference to it. It's not in reference I've to never the man. I've that interpretation. I've read like several commentaries on this report. I've okay, so in fact, I've got I've got someone who can give you more, who can give you a succinct like, reference. To... I, like, I but so what that so can I say me? So it's I, essentially it's a hymn. But I just can I just what you guys yeah. out here doing right? Today. I'll come back because to that. So I, that. I just feel like you just tried to talk at me and explain things. Which, like, it's like you're just trying to talk at me and just, like, I, I don't get the purpose of you guys being here because I love being out and sharing the word of God, the gospel, which we're commanded to go and do. Yeah. Um, so what we're trying to show to you is that the belief in God the Father as the only true God is what we should be, what we should be aiming towards. But I've given you a reference there in John 17:3. Like, based on, like, what is your belief? So we believe in one God. Who is we? Muslims. Yeah, we believe one God, the Father, who's the only true God. What we say is the word for God in Arabic is Allah. In Aramaic, the language Jesus spoke is Allah. In Hebrew, it's Elah. There's, there, in Arabic, Arama in Hebrew, God is Yahweh. No, that is um, one of the names attributed to God in the Old Testament, but it's not his personal. It's not. Yeah, but that's just something which is referred to in the third party narrative. So it's not the, ex in the Bible is the name of God Allah. Yeah. I don't recall. Exactly, but we know the Bible was written in, 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 in Greek, Koine Greek. It, Greek. No, I'm talking about the New Testament. Okay. The New Testament was written in Koine Greek. The Old Testament, as you made mention, was written in Arabic. But naturally, Christ didn't speak Greek. He spoke a language called Aramaic. So the language of the New Testament would have been written in that particular language. If you see the film The Passion of the Christ, it actually, when Mel Gibson plays the, the actor, it, it makes mention of Allah as referencing God. So let's get back to bit, a bit, I, a bit. I just wanted to do with that John 1 1 passage for your information. So, I don't, like, because the personification is God's, God's word personifies itself in the shape form of Christ. So his expression becomes manifest in the form of Jesus. That's all it's saying. Secondly, it's a parenthesis. These are not the words of Jesus, but actually it's the, it's the, um, it's the um, understanding of a chap called Philo of Alexandria, who lived just a generation or two before Jesus, and which... I don't know where that comes from. Yeah, so, I read my Bible and That's fine. That. Okay, that's fine. That's something which is a, this I want to get... So anyway, this is, a, this is a parenthesis. These are not the words of Jesus. This is the author of the Gospel of John, of which there are a multitude. And every word of this book here is God free. Well, in 1 Timothy, yeah. yeah. But the point is that's in refer reference to the Old Testament because the, um, the subsequent... Ver what sub do you think it is in reference to the Old Testament? Not because, it, because, it, because Paul makes reference to that and by, the time, by that time the Gospels weren't written. The first initiations of the New Testament were the, the letters of Paul and um, so th therefore there was no New Testament which was prevalent at that particular time. Hence it would have been referring to the Septuagint of the Greek translation no, of the Hebrew well, Bible. Well, the Old Testament, like entirely from from beginning to the end like points towards jesus it points towards the fact that a savior would come and jesus fulfills like over a hundred prophecies written in the old testament that said would happen about the coming messiah yeah but, but as muslims we 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 fully accept he was a messiah the mass the, the mass the, the chosen the anointed one but we what we say he was born of a virgin birth who was the messiah who would return at the end times, who was a noble and a messenger of God, but he was not God. And because he makes it absolutely clear within the New Testament. No, he doesn't. Because well, I've given you that verse in John chapter... You need to interpret scripture with the rest of scripture. Okay, I'll give you another one, Matthew chapter 9. The entirety of scripture alludes to Jesus being God. Alludes, that's a key word you're using now. Because Seems to be a bit of a change. <laughs> what are you trying to get at? Because you said alludes to it. You said earlier, no, he is God. Yeah, he but, is God. but you're saying alludes yes, means I'm, allude means, means to implying. It doesn't say it though. Okay, the Bible says it. What I'm trying to say is the common message that runs through the Bible is that Jesus is God and he couldn't possibly have been our Messiah if 
he wasn't God himself because only God is perfect. Yeah. Only God is sinless. Yeah. And uh, the sacrifice yeah. of the one who came to save us had to be a perfect, spotless, sinless lamb, which Jesus was. So like, again, he couldn't have been our saviour if he wasn't God. But he didn't have to die for the sins of mankind, you see. Yes, the whole he did. because. How else would we get? Like, how else would it? Make okay, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Was Christ? Listen, before you answer my question, think about this deeply. Was Christ a willing, happy? Was Christ a willing sacrificial lamb, happy and ready to die for the sins of mankind? Happy, yes, I'll ask you to look, look, notice my words carefully. Okay, so why is it in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7, he, he's begging God to take this burden away from him? Yeah, but he says, if it is your will, take this cup of suffering away from me, yet yeah, not your will be done, yet yeah, not my will be done, but yeah. yours. And so he then understood God, that it was the Father's will. So in that same verse, then, then it says God hears, but it says in that same verse, that God hears and accepts his supplication, which is referred to in Psalm 116. So, so, so Hebrews 5, 7 is being quoted in Psalm 116, where it says God will save his Messiah from any attempts to harm him. We believe as Muslims that Jesus escapes the crucifixion, that any attempts to harm me were unsuccessful and God saves him. Because, because by the biblical definition, one who dies um, 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 as a, uh, on the cross is, is a curse, which we don't believe Jesus is a curse. So, Whatever you're thinking we're out here for, we're here to make you understand that Jesus, his central message was to worship God and God alone. Okay? He made it clear that there's only one true God and he is the messenger of God, which I think I've shown to you very poignantly well, in verse seven, chapter I 17, think verse 3. Jesus was the messenger of God and I just think okay. that you haven't tried to really engage in conversation with me, but you've just tried to just lecture me in ways that I may not be able to catch you out upon. And I know that in the Islamic faith, you're taught from early to be able to make a defense against the Christian faith, but I just want to say to anyone who does end up seeing this, that Jesus died so that you can be forgiven, and he's the only way to eternal life, and the Bible says, Jesus says himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to Nizam, God Nizam. except through me, yeah, and so. it says in the Bible, we are saved by grace through faith, <laughs> it is a gift of, um, we are saved by grace through faith, it is a gift and not by works, so that no man can boast. God sent Jesus to die for Truly, us. Truly, thanks for the. Uh, we really appreciate that, what you've said and we respect you for that. You However, I just want. Because you're cutting me from yeah, but it's essentially just a discussion we're having as opposed no, no, to what. But you haven't really been having a discussion with me. No, because you've. You're to I've respected you. long paragraphs which I can't necessarily. Absorb. Come back to you no, because with, you, oh, the central question we respect you, Trudy, was simply we respect you was simply that you believe that Jesus is God, yeah. and then you said that's re reiterated throughout the whole New Testament. Yeah. I've I've said that that's not the understanding that I partake from reading the New Testament. I've then given you sight. Okay, fine. I mean, you're entitled to believe whatever you want. You then gave me some certain verses. I showed to you from John 1, 1 that it's not necessitating that Jesus is God from that particular uh, chapter. And then I showed to you from which angle I'm coming from when I'm reading it. So I've said nothing untoward in that sense. Now, you're still insisting that John, when, uh, in John 1, 1 that he's still God, but I've tried to explain to you how he can't be God based upon the points that are made. So this is not like a lecture or a admonition of yourself or what you believe, rather it's a recognition as to who Christ would have been from the New Testament himself. So I've given you some verses, which is obviously I've- The Ivan. Lord, the Messiah, the anointed one, yes. the only, the, he's the way, the truth, the life. So, so don't you think I explained true, that reasonably well? he said was true, in including the fact that you must be born again. Well, you don't have to add anything to Trudy. Yeah. She said, the nice lady she is, she's very passionate. She's very oh, passionate about her faith. She was, yeah. You guys could end it, and I don't mind carrying on. So, no, but yeah, it's all right. I'm about just carrying on. Isaiah prophecy about <laughs> Emmanuel. Um, so if you look at Mary, um, she names her son Jesus, mm -hmm. but she never calls him uh, Emmanuel. Um, but it says that she will name him or call him Emmanuel. But in the Bible, Jesus is never called Emmanuel. Hi. And it also says um, he shall be called Emmanuel, not that he shall be Emmanuel. So there's a difference between he shall be or and he shall be called. But and there's many like, Christians that are called Emmanuel. Emmanuel. like God with us, right? Yeah. But then, you know, in John 1 it says the word which I believe to be Jesus became flesh and dwelt among well, us. So mm -hmm. to burn a called among us, like dwell among us, stays with us today. So essentially that is what Emmanuel It doesn't actually say Jesus, but it says the word was yeah. with God and the word was God. But if you Which say, yeah, sorry. Commonly believed to be Jesus, based on yeah. the Greek. So if you substitute the word with Jesus, um, then it becomes um, the 
Jesus was with God, uh, who's the Father, and uh, Jesus was the Father. So then you end up making Jesus the Father. That's what we were trying to say. It's like, we believe that Jesus was God, but not the Father. So we believe that God is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as I'm sure you know. But if you read John 1, 1, if you take it literally, then it means that Jesus is the Father. Taking it literally, it would mean in the beginning was... In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with the Father. So, but you say what he's trying to say to truly with respect. Just check it out. Last time I was saying, we'll leave it then. So, in John one one, God is like Yahweh. Like God, Jesus is God, but it doesn't say like John one one doesn't say Father. It says God, and I believe I don't believe Jesus is Father. So, who do you think the first God is referring to? First, the first mention of the word God. Who's that referring to? God the Father, like I do believe yeah. it is referring to. Okay, God so the Father. Well, no, not necessarily. Oh, okay. I would say like, to Yahweh, like so okay. God. And who's Yahweh? Is that Jesus? Well, God. God the Father, yeah. But, okay. But so it is the Father. So Jesus was with the Father, and Jesus was the Father. Well, I, we wouldn't believe it to mean that He was the Father. So you know, in Revelation chapter one, verse nine. Um, it actually makes a distinction between Jesus and the Word of God. So, like the Word of like Word of God doesn't always mean Jesus. Oh, yeah. I know, because sometimes, always. like the Bible yeah, is yeah. called the Word of yeah, God. Yeah. Does it mean Jesus but is the Bible? Yeah. One. Yeah. So, if you look at English translations of the Bible that were done before the King James, like the Geneva translation, um, they translate that as meaning it rather than he. Uh, because the Greek word grammatically is mutagenda, so it can be I, translated I as it rather than into that before, so I'll, yeah. I'll definitely go away. And I think you made an objection so when afterwards. When the word becomes flesh, yeah. then it becomes a person, but prior to that, it's like a entity, like which is what it's like a agency or communication. So that's not what I think to believe, but I will based on what you've said. Go and just and take also, a look at um, if you look in the Old Testament for the word word. Um, it always refers to like um, an impersonal, like a message, like the word of the Lord came to Jonah. So there it doesn't mean Jesus came to Jonah, but it means like Jonah received revelation or communication from God. Yeah, but I, I do know that like there's just several different 